Tell me if it pops up. It's live now. It is? Alright. Well, sorry about that, guys. We ran into some technical difficulties. Let's see if we can get this set up. We had... No, oh, it's telling me. I can't. I can't turn. Okay. So, sorry about that, guys. We were having some weird issues with Facebook Live. It just wasn't doing for us what we wanted it to do. So, we had to do a little bit of a runabout. Don't worry. We're still going to do our half-hour class on hitching and lashing. So, those of you who are tuning in, thank you so much for the patience. Um, sometimes things like that happen, you know. Yeah, but we're gonna make the best of it. And we're gonna do what we gotta do. Sorry about the weird angle if it, is, it comes off that way. Um, I'm actually gonna try to reorient a little bit so that we can compensate because we don't want to cut the feed because then we might, we might, you know, we might lose you guys. And I want you guys to be able to get your daily camp classroom as long as this tripod doesn't decide it hates me. All right, so. All right, we see. I see. We got Nathan. We got Sam. Sam Westfall watching. So Sam's looking to come back this summer. Very exciting. He just spent some time out in Colorado, working at another YMCA camp for the off season. All right. So, like I said, as we're going about it, surviving, making strides. All right. Today's class is hitching and lashing. We close the door so we don't get disturbed. All right. So hitching and lashing is a very handy skill. It is a skill that I first learned when I was a kid because I had all those, you know, the, the cliche old 90s G.I. Joe action figures with the action grips, you know. And uh, I wanted to have more authentic scenery for them when I was playing with them out in the backyard, you know, whether it was at the, out in the sandbox in the back corner yard or just out in the tall grass or wherever. And, you know, I learned it through Boy Scouts originally myself and have used it, you know, camping personally or, you know, you know, when I was in the National Guard serving for the mil serving with the Army National Guard in Ohio. Um, it's a handy skill. All right. So we're going to talk about it a bit today. So like like I said, the class is hitches and lashings. OK, so there's two hitches we're going to learn today or try to learn today. And we're going to try and get through a couple lashing variants, okay? And, yeah, we're going to wave at every one. All right, all the waving. All right, now, the first hitch we're going to learn is a clove hitch, okay? And a clove hitch, whoo, it's fighting me. Okay, the clove hitch, it's kind of your standard hitch. It's used in a lot of lashings. It's used for a lot of things, all right? And we're going to be using it today... All right, with our little demonstration dowel rod and a shoelace. Okay, now out at home, wherever you're at, whatever you might be using, all right, uh, you can use a shoe just like with the knots class. You can use a shoelace, you can use some string, some twine, uh, you can use all sorts of things. It really just depends on what you have handy. So take a moment if you haven't already in preparation for the class, you know, pull that sho shoelace out the boot. Find some string, some handy dandy. If you happen to have a section of rope or something laying around, you know, grab what you need and follow along as best you can. And I'm going to try and take it slow. All right. And we'll go over the hitches a couple of times because the hitches are actually kind of the more tedious part. The lashings are more of a proper way to wrap things when you're binding two sticks together or two pieces together or you're setting something up. Okay. Now, for your clove hitch, there's two ways to do a clove hitch, actually. All right, a clove hitch, you, you see clove hitches used in all sorts of places. We actually, here at camp, I personally, I know I do, everyone has their own little way to do it. I use a clove hitch for, um, you know, the, uh, for the, the little tethers that we have for sending the ropes up and down in the rope courses and the high ropes and the rock wall and everything. All right. Um, but it's also used, some people use it for sailing. You also more commonly see it as a, a way to hitch up your, a quasi-fancy way to hitch up your horse if uh, you're out in the Wild West or anything like that. Now, the two ways to do a clove hitch, the main way that we're going to talk about today, 
Okay, we're actually going to do it this way. That way it makes sense for you guys orientation-wise. I'm a little lopsided, but we'll make it work. We adapt and overcome, okay? Now, for a clove hitch, if you're tying it on, okay, so you got your post, all right? You would typically tie it on because maybe you want it in the center of a post or a certain spot, and you can't just easily slide it on um, or get to the end of the post because maybe it goes through and through. Maybe you're tying this off in a... Uh, a closet to hang a sh you know hang you know hang a sh pair of shoes to dry or uh, wherever you might be okay so for a clove hitch you're gonna go over it you're gonna bring it back down under it all right so you should have something like this very fancy very nice all right you're gonna go across you're gonna go not behind it you're gonna go over and you come bring it back down all right, and we're going to go right through, okay? So you should have something like that, all right? And you're going to tighten it down, whoo, all right? And that makes your clove hitch. We'll go over that again. Don't you worry. Don't you fret, all right? Now to loosen the hitch, all right, you got to make sure there's no weight on it, all right, which there isn't. I've got nothing tied off on the other end of this yet or at this time, all right? And you just want to go in, and I like to, I always say, just tickle it loose. All right, just like you, you know, when you're petting your cat or tickling its belly. All right, you just tickle that loose. All right, and so to see that again, tying on the clove hitch, you go over, you bring it back around, you come over at the bottom, come across, okay? Make sure you got plenty of length. You're going to hold on to that bit down here and feed it over. I'm going to need a little more length on there. All right, come across. All right, you're going to go over again. Bring it around and back. All right. And then you got the end of the rope back here. I'm going to feed it through. I'm going to grab that end of the rope and I'm going to tighten it down. I'm going to clean up my hitch, tighten it down. Look at that. That guy ain't going anywhere. One of the beauties of hitches, how they kind of work, is the rope is gripping onto itself as well as wrapping around whatever post or pole or pipe or surface you're hitching onto. All right, it's creating friction, locking itself in place. All right, that's kind of the, the the basic idea behind the hitch. All right, and then like I said, you just want to tickle that loose to get your hitch back off. And it's a real real quick way to kind of just lock a rope down if you need to, because if you look, it doesn't take that long at all to throw a hitch on. Okay, boom, clove hitch. All right, now a second way to do a clove hitch, say you do have the end of a post exposed that you can tie onto, okay? So what you want to do, all right, we'll set that down for a second, all right, is you want to, you're going to make two loops in your rope, okay? Your first loop, all right, so we got the end of the rope here, our end of our shoelace, our string, all right? We got the rest going out this way. So I got the end in my left, the rest in my right. Okay, so you're going to want to do, to make your two loops, it's going to twist just like that. Notice I'm twisting from right to left towards myself. I'm going to take another bit. I'm going to twist from right to left away from myself. Away. All right. It's going to make two loops. All right. And you can see on the loops, this guy's riding by, coming back behind. This guy is coming back behind as well. This guy should actually be coming back in your front. Ooh, Tony, what are you doing today? Okay, so we'll do that that step again. All right, so twist away towards the right. That's where we messed up. See, sometimes you make accidents, and that's part of the learning process or practicing. Um, and practice makes perfect. Um, obviously, I'm a little rusty today. Okay, so like I said, you're going to want to have your end. Take a pinch. Twist it to the right. There you go. And take another bit, take a pinch, twist it to the right. All right? That's right. How many times can I say right today? All right, then you're going to take your two bunny ears. This guy's riding behind. This guy's riding in front. And you're going to take the one in your right hand and overlap it with the one in your left. You're going to make these two loops line up. And then you're going to put that on your post. All right, or whatever you're tying off to. You can even use, uh, you know, someone's arm. If you needed something to work with. All right. You tighten that down. 
And there you go. You got your clove hitch. All right. Comes up pretty nice. I'm going to try and keep it in focus for you guys. Don't want to make it too disorienting. All right. So you got your clove hitch. Okay. And a clove hitch, again, take the weight off. You can tickle it loose. And maybe you don't want to tickle it all the way loose, but you can just slide it off if you're doing this version. Okay. So quick review. All right. We got our string. We're going to tie on a clove hitch. We go over. Bring it back under, come across, make sure you got plenty of room to work with, come across, go over again, feed it around back, feed it through this new loop we've made, and you got a clove hitch. Or you can do the loop method, all right, where you twist, take a bit of rope, you twist. You twist, you overlap, and slide it on. And with both those styles, we've made a nice, secure handle on this particular stick. Ain't that something? All right, and that's the quick explanation, the quick way to talk about it, to go over your clove hitches. Okay, like I said, when there's no weight on it, I can just slide it right off. Ooh, got a little aggressive there. All right, the other hitch we're going to talk about right now, real quick, all right, is a timber hitch. All right, a timber hitch, it's a little bit different. It's still a hitch by definition because you're tightening it down and just doing a quick loop. All right, timber hitch, I, you're actually going to use it on a couple of different lashing techniques. And you can also see it, you know, I've always, I've seen it a number of times used by people. Uh, if they have like a big bundle of sticks or if they have a bundle of wood or whatever, or even some lumber real quick that they're trying to tie off the end and move it real quick. All right. Now with a timber hitch. All right. So the easiest way to explain this, and it's a tie on hitch. You don't really want to do a, there's no real loop prep, kind of like the clove hitch had. For the timber hitch, it's all tie on. So you're going to want to loop around. All right, and then the way I usually do it is I do, I go over and back around towards me. All right, and then I'll loop around, okay. And then you're actually going to wrap it. And I always try to give it at least three good wraps, two and three. All right, you're going to have this nice wrapping going on, all right. It doesn't have to be the cleanest thing in the world, but it just has to have a good wrap around it. And you're going to tighten it down. This one's a little harder to tighten down sometimes. Use your thumb to slide it up. All right, tighten it down. And look at that. You got yourself a nice timber hitch. And we'll go over that again. Now, the timber hitch, again, with most hitches, if not all hitches, as long as you don't have weight on it, you got slack on the line, you're going to either be able to slide it off or just kind of tickle it loose and slide it off and undo it and do what you need to do with it okay so we'll do that timber hitch again like I said I always go over away from myself I bring it back underneath all right we'll wrap inwards towards the left and then moving towards the right we'll start wrapping this end around and around and around so we got three wraps and then we'll go for a tighten down and we'll use our thumb to cheat a little bit, get that nice and tight. But it's not really cheating. Just getting everything in place. And boom. You got yourself a nice functional timber hitch. All right. Now, timber hitch, like I said, for carrying a bundle of sticks or something, you just come back around with the other end and tie another, just like we did with that clove hitch. And you could tie up a bundle of sticks or a bundle of whatever you're moving. Okay, um, in the model I made, because down here below you can see I made, I did a couple of, a couple of little miniatures, so to speak, of some hitches and lashings going on just so we could talk about different things and see a, a finished product ahead of time before we move to the, uh, the simulation or the, the two dowel rods I've been using in front of you so far. 
Um, one of a uh, very common uh, because it's very practical uh, lashing that you'll see is a shear lashing, which we actually have a shear lashing right here. So a shear lashing is just bringing two sticks together, and maybe you bring them together like this and make uh, what I like to call cheaters chopsticks. All right. Uh, terrible dexterity in the hand sometimes. So cheaters chopsticks is really nice. All right. But you can also slide it. All right. And potentially put a second hitch on there so that you have a longer stick. It's a good way to elongate a stick in case maybe you need it for support when you're doing shelter building, which by the way, I hope you guys tune in for shelter building next week. I believe it's on Thursday. All right. But if you need a longer pole or a stick for shelter building, you do two of these wonderful shear hitches, all right? Because one, it's pretty loosey-goosey, right? It's spinning, it's turning, it's not a lot of strength. Whereas if you have that second shear hitch on it, it's going to be a, a pretty sturdy extended piece for you to be able to reach, whether you're trying to drag something closer to you. What's up, Alex? Or push something away or even build it in as a support onto a structure, okay? So that's your... Your shear lashing. Now let's talk about how to make a shear lashing. Okay. Now to make a shear lashing, you're going to start with that clove hitch we just talked about. Okay. Um, now remember for the clove hitch, what are we doing for that clove hitch? Anybody want to comment below? All right. For the clove hitch, all right, on a shear lashing, I usually start off with the loops rather than tying it on. But it, at least in this case, because it's so small. But if we were talking about bigger posts or logs or something like that, you'd kind of be forced to do it on the ground as a tie-on. Okay, but for our purposes right now, we're going to just do it with the loops. So with our loops, with our rope, or our shoelace, whatever you're using at home, you're going to make your first loop. All right, remember this is on top. This right hand has the rope that's on the bottom. All right, and you're going to do your second loop. And remember, each time you're turning, you're twisting right, making those loops. Okay, we're going to overlap our loops. Sorry if we're going out of picture there. Okay. And then we're going to bring our posts up that we're going to be putting them on. Feed them through. And tighten them down. Okay. And clean it up a little bit just like you would with our knot tying. Because you want neat knots. So remember what did we say about knots? A knot neat knot need not be knotted. I just love saying that. Alright so we got our clove hitch on there. Okay, and it takes a little finagling because you got to get everything right where you want it. All right, but we got it on there. And notice I'm leaving a little gap here. Okay, now the reason for that, I don't want too big of a gap, but I want a, enough of a gap for what we're going to be doing here in a couple steps. All right, now with the shear lashing, so we got our clove hitch initially holding our two posts together, our two sticks or whatever we're lashing together. All right, then you're going to take this extra bit and you're going to do a couple wraps. So that's one wrap. Uh, that's a two wrap. Okay. And now we got a three wraps. Okay. And depending on, you know, the size of what all you're doing, um, or if the, you know, the limitation on material like rope or string or whatever you have, three laps should work initially. But some people will go for the six laps or the six wraps if, if they can. Okay. Three wraps should do us. For today for what we're doing we're not doing any extensive engineering or heavy structural integrity building all right just yet all right if we really want to get crazy maybe we'll just do four wraps kind of meet in the middle a little bit all right and you're going to come around back one last time instead of doing a full wrap okay you're going to actually feed it remember that gap we left i left just enough of a gap to make this work we're going to feed it through the middle Whew, just like that Okay, so it's coming out through the middle. All right, and this is where we transition from doing wraps to what is known as fraps. I know, who came up with this? It's craziness. Now, for a sheer lashing, we only really need two fraps. And we're going to want to make them nice and tight. Whoops, pull that nice and tight. Go the way around. We're going to do one more, just so everything's nice and good. Whoop. All right, and this is where things get interesting. Okay, because looking at this, I'm not sure if I left myself quite enough length there. But we're going to see. I'm starting to think we didn't. 
all right because you're going to want to feed it through and then bring that through and go through that loop now like i said earlier you know whenever you make a mistake it's a learn it's a teachable moment as i like to tell a lot of people and teachable moments come up all the time and rather than getting and we can easily get aggravated at them or we can appreciate them all right and right now we're gonna pre, i'm gonna take some time to appreciate this one luckily i don't have to go back and undo everything i can go back and undo remember that fourth wrap we did yeah, that's probably what got me. All right, so we're going to cut it down to three wraps. Undo that fourth one. Feed it through the middle like we did before so we can get it into our fraps. All right, make sure everything's nice and, nice and dressed up, looking good. All right, so we fed it through the middle. We're going to come underneath. Bring it up. All right, and that's one frap. All right, nice and tight. You see that? Not bad. So that's one frap. And there's our second frap. Okay. So this is where we got caught earlier. All right. So what you want to do is here, before you feed it back through again after that second frap, make a little loop. All right. Feed your line. You know, that pops out the back. Everybody see that? Okay. And you're going to feed it through and tighten it down just like that and now we have ourselves a nice straightforward standard shear lashing all right just like we had on the cheaters chopsticks okay and with these all right i still have some slide to it okay because it's only one shear lashing okay what we can easily do so we can Prove the point and give us another run at seeing a shear lashing getting implemented. All right, so we're just going to slide it like that. Okay, and the reason for that, luckily, all my boots are now boot laceless. Boot laceless? Is that a thing? It is now. We'll go with it. All right, so I'm going to take another shoelace. I'm going to prep another wonderful clove hitch. All right, remember we twist right. Grab a bit, we twist right, we overlap. We got a nice opening there. We're gonna feed right through. We're gonna do a tighten down. All right, remember, like we talked about before, we don't wanna to tighten too much because remember, we wanna be able to get in there for the frapping later. All right, so we got that. Notice we're going the same way. You can alternate it or have them versus each other. I just am doing it this way because it's a little simpler, a little easier to get through. All right. So we're going to go our wraps because we've got that nice, got that nice clove hitch on there. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do our wraps. we got one wrap. And again, we don't want to go too tight. Not just yet. All right. We're going to do a second wrap. All right. Not too bad. Not too bad. We're going to do our third wrap. Oh. There you go. And we're going to come back around almost like we're doing a fourth wrap, but this time we're going to cut through the middle so we can start our fraps. Now, this is where it gets interesting if you're trying to elongate something because did we leave enough room to fit it through? Oh, a little brute force. If only I had more, more thin of finger. Yeah. All right. We were able to make it fit through. All right, so we're going to do our first frap. Ooh, very nice. We're going to do our second frap. we got to feed it through first, though. Right down the middle. Tighten it down really nice. All right, then we feed it through one more time. Oh, actually, we got it now. So back feed it. So we can make our loop, just like last time. Feed it through. Tighten it down. And then adjust everything accordingly. And you got two sticks or whatever you might be using as your implement to practice or work on this. You have them lashed together. All right, and that's just a clove hitch and a simple shear lashing. All right, done twice two pieces of rope or, or string or whatever you have and that gives you a little bit longer all right that 
that lengthen, lengthens your, your situation a bit. And again, it's handy. All right, we'll, we'll mess with that a bit. It's a little loosey-goosey. Of course, we're doing this on the fly. All right. And like I said, we're just doing this for our tutorial, for our training today. It was nice and loose. Now, some people, if you're making a more permanent structure or lashing, uh, will cut it down and maybe glue it to fasten it so that you don't lose your efforts here. Um, but a lot of times, typically if you're out and about, you're out in the bush or you're out in the forest, or you're out in the woods camping, whatever, doing this, you're going to leave these these uh, these little little tendrils going, all right? You'd leave them and not cut them so you could come back or when you were done doing whatever you were doing, you'd be able to recover it, okay? Um, and being able to recover is handy for uh, a number of reasons. You know, you might need these lashings or these bits of rope or string for, you know, something else later on down the trail. Now, recovering it, you just got to go through and untie everything. And it's just reverse of what you did. You undo the fraps. You undo the wraps, and you're just back down to this clove hitch. You just undo your clove hitch. Too easy, right? All right. And then the second clove hitch, or even for both of them, what you also could have done was finagle your way and slide it out. All right. Now, a lot of times, if you're out in the woods doing this, you're not necessarily using these nice, smooth dowel rods. All right. You know, typically, uh, you'd be using sticks or branches or whatever you could really find out and about. Uh, to, to build your shelter or make that, that long post for whatever reason that you need it. Um, so there's going to be a rougher grid on it. It's going to help the rope hold steady at that location, at that spot. Plus, it's not going to be perfectly straight and planed like these are. Okay, So you won't always be able to just slide your lashings back off. I guess it's the best way to kind of phrase it or say it. Um... The next guy we're going to go into is we're going to talk about a square lashing. All right, assuming we still got time. If we go a little over, it'll help make up for uh, for our late start today. Um, so a square lashing, something a little more like this guy. Okay, I'll bring him up so we can see him in the camera. All right, so square lashing is because you're trying to make that right angle, okay? And typically this would be maybe you're making a frame um, for a lean-to. Um, where you're going to use two pieces of wood, two pieces, two sticks, two posts, whatever you have available. And you're going to lash them at the corners to make an almost complete square. Okay. Here we just have a right angle, which, you know, is debatable on what you could really use it for or do with it. Um, but typically, in, uh, at least as far as shelter building goes, you would do it with two corners. So you had a full, almost, you know, uh, three three sides of a square so you can lean that up but we'll get more into that when we get to our shelter building class next week in the meantime we're going to talk about how to do the square lashing okay now the square lashing we're going to start yet again big surprise here we're going to start with our clove hitch okay so how we do the clove hitch we'll do it one more time just in case so we're all on the same page right all right so the clove hitch if you're doing the twist method all right, you're going to twist to the right, you're going to twist to the right, you're going to have these two bunny ears, you're going to bring the right one over top of the left one, you're going to make that overlap, all right, and you're going to feed that onto your post, all right, you can also tie it on depending on the, the circumstance, whatever you're doing, you're going to tighten him down, and look at that, so we're hitched on, all right, we got our first post. Now this is where it's gonna get tricky for everyone, all right, because it's tricky to do by yourself. I, in an ideal world, um, if you have uh, at least another pair of hands or a teammate or something like that who can help you steady things, because um, it just makes it easier for one person to post up holding things and another person to be doing all the, the hitching and lashing, all right? But we're doing it on the fly, we're just doing a little a demo here, so we're gonna just do it ourselves. Now I'm going to redo this clove hitch for one main reason is just so I have a little more length to work with. Okay, so I'm going to cut them back. I'm going to cut them back. All right, remember we're turning, twisting right, making a loop. We're twisting right, making a loop, overlapping the right over the left. 
feed it through, tighten him down. Make sure it's nice and tight, right where you want it. All right, and then we're gonna be doing our square lashing like this. Okay, so you want your uh, clove hitch to be underneath the overlapping piece of wood or overlapping limb. Okay, and the first thing you're gonna do, I'm using my hand to hold it steady, but I'm gonna take the long bit, the excess, we're gonna go over, we're gonna go under that, we're gonna go over here. All right, you might have to switch your hands out. Okay, and then we're gonna go under and over again. All right, and just so you guys can see that. All right, so we've gone under and over to make our our wonderful square lashing. Okay, now the best way to do this is you're gonna repeat that at least one more time. All right, to try and steady things and tighten it down a bit. You see how that's nice and tight? I'm not even holding that top piece anymore. He's just on there by himself because I got tension on the rope. Okay. And you might want to do it one more time. Depends on how sturdy you need your day to be. All right. We got our nice square lashing going. Now we got to tie this guy off. Okay. So one of the easiest ways to tie him off, oh, what am I talking about? Tie him off, we still got to go down the middle, all right, because we got that section there, all right. So this is where we want to come over, we want to do our frapping, all right. So we got one frap, two, all right. We can get away with one, we can get away with two, it really depends on, again, how structurally sound you're trying to make this, because that frap is what's really tightening all of your lashings together to pinch it all in all right we're only going to do one frap just because of we only got so much length left we're going to go over and when you before you tighten her down come back up on the inside the left side you're going to feed him back through you're going to tighten him down and depending again on what you're doing you can leave the scragglies or you can trim them and glue it or burn it and melt it or depending also what material you're using to tie it off with. But you might want to do one, you might want to do two, it depends how much length you have. That's why it's always good to, whenever you go camping, take a good bundle of 550 quarter paracord with you just in case you have to do anything like this or just need it for, you know, Lord knows what might pop up. But tighten that down, make sure you're nice and tight and you got yourself a square lashing all right and remember if if that was too fast or if uh, you feel like you missed anything we've been posting these videos so you can always go back and watch it again later on um with you know the pause and play going at your own pace so it's really up to you all right but we got everything tightened down we got ourselves a nice little square lashing now again you know i always like to leave i leave the scraggly bits because you never know you never know when you're going to need to take it back and salvage out your cord or your, your rope or whatever you're using. So I always leave those on there so that you can finagle it a bit and then loosen it so that you can recover your lashings. All right. Now this is where we're going to find out where's the real structural integrity at with this. So we loosen that guy. Yeah, that's right there. That's where it starts to slip. All right, and we're back down to just our, our clove hitch. All right, so we'll go ahead and, just like we talked about at the beginning, tickle it loose. Boom. He's out of there. Okay. Now, the last thing we'll go over with lashings, all right, is we'll talk real quick about diagonal lashings now all these lashings um and and anything if you if you need more visual aids because you're really interested in in hitches and lashings there's <coughs> there's a website that i like to visit whenever i need a refresher on something it's called animated knots animatedknots.com has uh, a lot of wonderful walkthroughs on how to tie various knots and hitchings 
Um, as well as if honestly, if you go on to the Google, as they say, and you look up lashings, you can find a lot of uh, helpful imagery that helps you kind of look at it and dissect it and uh, also give you step-by-step walkthroughs on how to do it. All right. Uh, the diagonal lashing, just to, to show it to you guys, they will show you the diagonal. All right, we're not going to get into the demo on how to do it. But we might talk about it again when we get into our um, shelter building. But the diagonal is just like it sounds. You're just getting two diagonal pieces that are crossing each other to come across. Some people will use the diagonal, which the diagonal is the one that actually starts um, with a timber hitch. And some people will just use a square hitch, what we were just talking about. Um, you can use either to bring two diagonal pieces together like this. Um, it really just depends on, you know, what you're trying to do and what your scenario is. Like if you're, I've, I've seen people make towers and the, for the cross sections, it was after the fact that they tied them together in the middle. So it made more sense at the time for whatever reason to throw the, uh, you know, to throw the timber hitch on it. And sometimes the square hitch just makes more sense. It really depends on kind of how you're thinking about it and looking at it and wanting to do it. All right. And something that we have here on the model table, here we'll clear out things so we have less distractions, is actually this wonderful tripod. All right. So this tripod, it is a three-way hitch, all right, where it's a modified version of the clove hitch. All right. It's literally just a clove hitch, but we added another pole. So we wrapped around everything. We did our fraps, we did another set of fraps, and then tied it off. All right? Um, and that way, with the tripod, the idea is it gives you something. It gives you something to set up, whether it's over a fire. Um, in this situation, or the way we have it set up, I don't know how well you guys can see it on the camera. Um, it's just to hold up a bundle of sticks. Whoop! You got to balance it out, though. All right? And you can use it. We actually, a fun story about this, about using a tripod or a three-way shear lashing, is I actually uh, helped out with a, a Boy Scout who was doing his Eagle project, and we were putting a, a footbridge across a small stream back at the camp I used to work at in Ohio back in the day. And we actually, using 4 by 4s we set up you know a three-part shear lashing, put it up and we use that to, uh, you know, a rope going from that to help guide in uh, these massive telephone poles across the stream and then lift them up using between one of these set up on a grander scale and a come along. So it, it's really one of those things where one of the beauties or one of the fun parts of hitching and lashing, it's, it's all about what your imagination dictates and what you want to do with it or what you can come up with. Um, and it's definitely something that will come in handy when next week on Thursday when we get into our wonderful class on building outdoor structures and, you know, just exploring the woods a little bit. Um, I hope you guys tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have Becky. She's going to be talking about some happening herps, talking about our turtles. Um, and then please keep posted or keep an eye out on our Facebook page for next week's schedule of classes and when everything's going to be so you can tune in and uh, learn some cool and uh, useful skills from us here at camp. I hope everyone's doing well. And uh, if anything, I hope we get to see you guys later on in the summer. So have a wonderful day, and uh, you know, stay safe out there.